Welcome to the Life Unlimited Podcast with Larry Heller. You deserve complete financial advice so you can confidently live your life your way for life. Now, let's get into this week's podcast episode. Hello and welcome to Life Unlimited with Larry Heller from Heller Wealth Management. I'm Larry. <laughs> I'm Larry's producer. I'm not Larry. <laughs> I'm Eric, Larry's producer, and I'm here to learn along with you, the audience. Larry, how are you? I'm doing terrific, Eric. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited, audience. Uh, here's something a little bit different. For those that have been with us for a while, you know that Larry also has these videos on YouTube. So it's not just a podcast, it is a video. And today, Larry's going to be, we're going to share our screens a little bit. I'm going to have some documents up on the screen that Larry's going to walk us through. So um, it, he's also going to say this, you know, out loud. So you'll be able to hear it. But if you are a visual person, you're going to probably want to check this out also on YouTube. Yeah, we're also going to, we'll save the uh, documents. So there'll be links on that on the audio side. Absolutely. So they can follow along on that as well. Perfect. All right, Larry. So what are we talking about today? So today we're going to talk about our reservoir strategy. It's kind of a play on the bucket strategy, but we kind yeah. of changed it a little bit and calling it the reservoir strategy. So how you can invest using the reservoir strategy so you avoid worrying about stock market vol volatility. Okay. All right. So where do we start? And you tell me when to start the slides. So, well, let me, let's just start right in the beginning. So, you know, the last few months, we've had a lot of stock market volatility, as you know, Eric. Absolutely. And people have come up to me and say, oh, you must be getting so many phone calls and so many people upset. And I can honestly look them in the eye and say, we didn't get any phone calls. And they're like, how's that possible? Are you not getting <laughs> phone calls? You don't have people that are worried. And of course, people don't like to look at their investments mm -hmm. when they're down, but there's a lot of reasons why if you plan properly, and we're going to just talk about them, we go all through the, the steps in here that you, you listen to them, you do discovery with them, you educate them, you can communicate with your clients, they understand that. And then we have this reservoir strategy and when they get it, it's kind of an aha moment. So they understand what happens in both an up, down, up and a down market. And they they understand that and they don't panic and we can make changes accordingly. Yeah. Well, so, Larry, they're used to people that are, you know, that aren't communicating with them as effectively or as often as you are, right? They're, they're used to the advisors that they've known for a long time where it's, they don't talk to them. So yeah, they're going to make the phone call when something goes wrong. Hey, what's going on? But you're constantly in contact with your clients. Yeah, but it's it's more than it's not the, that that's part of it. But it's mm -hmm. really educating them and discussing and talking with them beforehand. So yeah, when true. this happens, they're like, okay, okay. I remember talking to a client. I don't remember how many years ago. And every year we would do the presentation. I would say, you know, one year we're going to have a down. Uh, when we're doing their reviews, we're going to have a down market. And I think we went seven or eight years before we ever had a down market. So like, sure, Larry, sure. But we're constantly talking about that. We're going yeah. to cover that in some, in some detail. Okay. All right. So where do we start today? So let's start right. Let's start right in the beginning. And we're talking about, you know, discovery. And that's mm -hmm. when we speak to somebody before we're putting in an investment strategy, we listen to them. We're talking to them about their financial goals and their dreams and their time horizon. So that those key words, the time horizon is really important because if you need to use money in the short term, you shouldn't be taking as much risk as is if you don't need the money for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so when you're creating investment strategy, you want to know that you want to know what their goals are, how much do they need? Maybe they have a wedding coming up next year, or they want to buy a second home in three years. Um, or they have something coming up in the near term. You want to know that. So you don't put that in the wrong investment strategy and they're forced to sell at a downtime or they start panicking about that especially if you're re retired and you no longer have money coming in. I don't care how much money you have. When you see the pot of money going down, you get nervous. So if mm. you have a way of understanding that and not worrying about that, it's a much more calming, calming effect. So we want to understand, okay, if you're retired, how much do you have to pull out of your portfolio to live on? So we want to know what that expense number is. And why do we want to know that that expense number is net of what you're receiving from any pensions or social securities? You're going to need that in 
this year if you're retired and mm -hmm. obviously in the second year in the third year. So that money, even though you, there's not a specific need, it's really their need to live on. So we want to know what their expenses are. We want to know what their cash flow is. We want to know what their goals are. And of course, it can change. Somebody may say, you know, I'm planning to do travel for the next 10 years and I want to spend $50,000 a year on travel or uh, I'm turning 65 and I want to have an extended family vacation. So listening and talking to them and meeting with them on a regular basis to because as those things change, you may have to change your strategy. So that's kind of the big part of what we what we do. Uh, and then once we have an idea of what their goals and their objectives are and their what needs are and their expenses are, now we have them fill out a 25 question risk tolerance. Um, it's by a company called Finometrica. We've been using it oh, over 20, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a lot more than some of these cookie cutters that you, that you see out there where they're just asking you aggressive, conservative. So when you do these questions, you get a really good idea of what their pain points are and what their risk tolerance is. So once you can you know, see what that, what that is, you can get a better idea of what the allocation is because you know they won't panic when something when when their accounts may be down a little bit versus if you do too much in let's say the stock market they're going to they're not going to stay the course when it goes down so let's put that first slide up there and I'll discuss what I'm talking about all right Okay, so this is the risk tolerance there. So over on the 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 green is where they're comfortable. The yellow is kind of marginal where they get uncomfortable, and the red is where they would be really uncomfortable. And you notice there's two bars. So there's we do it separately for each spouse. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're in alignment, sometimes they're way off, and you have to make some compromises here. So it, the, there's two categories. The one that says current. And that's the one where they are right now. So based upon if it's a new client coming to us, this is based upon all their investments. This is where they are. So if you notice one, one of the spouses is in the yellow, the marginal, which is okay. Mm -hmm. but the other one is in the red. So that one is showing a, a little bit higher risk that they would probably get very nervous during a correction. Got so it. what we yeah. want to do is we want to move that and we want to move their targets into the into the green area. So if we move them into the green area, they may not always stay in the green area. So when they're if we set it up in the green area and the stock market goes up and therefore their green becomes yellow. And if it goes up really fast over to the red, what would we what would we do when we're looking this on an ongoing basis and we notice a client's allocation has gotten outside of their comfort zone. Yeah, you know, just that, right? Exactly. We'd rebalance back to their comfort zone. So we, and that clients understand this, they understand where they are, they understand where the comfort le level is. And you know what? We actually also have a mandate. This risk tolerance questionnaire gets redone every five years because mm. your risk tolerance may be different five years from now than it is now. So that's really the first you know, the first thing that we're doing from a risk tolerance side. So, okay. so then we start talking to them about the history and some, what has gone on in the, in the stock market and give them, an, you know, give them an idea. One of the things I love to tell clients is um, if you invest in the S and P five, and I'll ask you, Eric, historically out of every 10 years, how many years has the S and P 500 been up and how many years has it been down? Do you know? I thought it was like eight out of 10. Pretty good. Pretty close. It's seven out of 10. Oh, okay. So that, so that means that during a 10 year time frame, historically, you're going to have three down years. Now, again, that's not always going to happen. There's not, not, doesn't mean the future is going to be the same as the past. But, and like I said, that other client was with me for seven or eight years, never had a down year, but you're already starting to educate them that if you're going to be in the stock market, Guys, there are going to be some years that are down. We're not going to try to predict what the market is doing. Um, and we're not going to outguess. We're not on the TV saying, oh, you should move your money out of the market. Because you know what happens when you do that? 
you get it wrong. Mm -hmm. And when you get it wrong, that's when you miss big upswings. Yeah. So, um, so knowing that up front that there is going to be some ups and downs, and we're going to do some things when 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 the market's up, we're going to take some of the profits off. When the market's down, we may want to add into there because the cycles will change. So we're kind of talking to them about that. And then we also look at some of the, you know, we look at some of the history and should try to show them how long some of these downturns last. And we've got numerous slides, but this is one slide here. Um, and uh, it may be a little difficult to see some of the numbers, but up in the upper right hand corner, it shows you the 10 highest. This is a, actually a 60 40 allocation going back. I think this is about 50 years worth of um, data. So 60% in stocks, 40% in bonds. And it shows that the 10 highest uh, time frames, and you can see that it, you know it's anywhere from 11 to 33% on the 38% uh, on the upswing. And you can see how mm. quickly that they go. They're going from four months or, a, uh, or 13 months, 11 months. So the market goes up very, very quickly. But in the lower right hand corner, you're now going to see some of the downturns here and how when did the downturn start, how long did it last mm. and how long it takes to recovery. So if you notice this again, this is a 60 40 portfolio. If you're looking at the months to fall, sometimes I'll just look at the top line, the worst case scenario there that it took 16 months to fall. This is October 2007. That was the, the banking crisis. Mm -hmm. it, was, it fell 16 months and then it was 19 months before it recovered. So it took you 35 months from the one of the worst times in history for the market to go down on a 60 40 portfolio. If you had more equities, it would have been longer. So that's three years. So what is that really telling us? And why are we, why are we concerned about that? Well, remember when we first talked about discovery and when you need the money. Yeah. So therefore what we're saying is if you need the money within the first three years, you shouldn't have any money in the stock market. That money should not be there for the in the stock market. That should be in the safe part of your portfolio, cash, short-term treasuries, things that are going to have no risk. And if you're retired and you need um, draw money from your portfolio, we're going to say you're going to have three years worth of expenses in cash, and that's where it kind of gets in a little bit into our into our reservoir into our reservoir strategy um, a little bit a little bit later but actually you know what let's pull, let's pull up that reser reservoir strategy a little bit and then we'll double back into sure asset allocations you bet give me a second we'll get that on the screen all right okay so he, here's the here's the reservoir strategy so in the short term where it says short term investments on the bottom mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about your three year number so, and because that's the money that's going to flow out to you. So the, we now know that, okay, we need three years worth of expenses that are going to go to you, whatever that expense number is. So if it's $10,000 a month, that's $120,000. That means you're going to have $360,000 sitting in cash short-term money. Now that may be hard for some people like, why do I want to have so much money earning very little interest? And that's because you want to have that cushion in there. So when we go through these downtimes, you don't panic and sell because you have the money that you don't have to mm -hmm. sell something that's down. And then we have long-term and medium-term. And we talked about 60, 40. So 60% in equities, guess where that goes? Oh, which reservoir? <laughs> <laughs> I was sure that was rhetorical. Well, I'm going to make sure you're not sleeping on me. Yeah. Eric. <laughs> hey, no, I've, I've got the buttons. Larry, I got this. I'm sorry. What was the question again? Where's the 60%? Where's the 60% in, in, in equities go? It's going to be medium. No. No. So that would be long the long-term bucket. That's the long-term. Okay. That's the long-term bucket. So why is that the long-term? Because the stock market it's really more volatile. should be investing for the long-term. Yes. Okay. Um, so the so the equities would go into the long term bucket, and then that's the medium term bucket. We'd fill up with with fixed income bonds. And again, we're just kind of talking in generalities. Everyone's specifics would be different. So now what happens is if we have money in both the equities and money in the in the bonds, and let's say again you're re you're retired, 
the dividends and interest can flow from the long term and the medium term all the way down to the short term, going from one reservoir down to the other one to replenish that that reservoir. And then when the long term bucket is doing well, the equities, guess what we're going to do? We're Take from the medium. No, so no, when the long term equities is done really well, so now your allocation has gone mm -hmm. up to equities. We're going to take some of that money and put that in either medium or short term. Got it. Okay. All, All right. right. That it. makes sense. You got that. Um, so, so it's constantly flowing. And if you look at it, this is why we have these reservoirs. They can flow from the long term to the medium term, from the medium term to the short term, or directly from the long term to the short term, depending upon what the, okay. what the needs are. But again, now clients are visualizing it and they're starting to get the, an understanding of what their strategy is and how this is going to work, at both in an up market and a down market. We've showed them, we've listened to them, we've talked about their goals, we've listened to the expenses. We can take this this chart off for for, for an hour. Actually. Sure. Um, so we've we we've talked to them about their 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 needs, their goals, their expenses. We've kind of started to educate them. And then we have some more charts that we go through on some of the, the stock market history. So they've seen the history in there. We've talked about the, you know, replenishing of the reservoir. Mm -hmm. So now we, now we, you go down and we can drill down and, and start talking to them in more detail about the asset allocation. And within equities, we can talk about um, different sectors, value, growth, U.S., international, and then the specific types of investments, ETFs. And then we go into fixed income. We talk about bond funds and the pros and cons of bond funds versus individual bonds. So, but th that conversation is not done when we're talking about specific investments until we've gone through the discovery and the education and the communication part. So uh, making it easier for them to understand what's going to happen. And then the last thing is we talked about the rebalancing a little bit, right? When mm -hmm. I said moving from one reservoir to the other. So four times a year, we're looking at their allocation and seeing how it's going. And it's all by the numbers. We have certain percentages based upon how they increase, what the allocation is. And if they hit certain numbers, we sell high and then we buy low. So I hope you get the audience out there is getting an idea of how you can put something together so you don't have to worry about it. And you don't, you can turn that TV off when you turn on mm -hmm. the TV and it says, Oh, the, uh, the Dow Jones was down 900 points today. You can say, you know what? I don't have to worry about it because I'm all covered for the next few years. And I don't care what that the Dow is doing today. As long as I know then, then when I need it long-term, that 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 money should be up again. We've had long term time frames when the equities hasn't been up, but but that's that's kind of how what you're doing here when you're you're creating that. And then we add on the last part, which is kind of what you and Sin, you, you talked about earlier, is the communication part. Mm -hmm. Is that so? We're sending out, you know, um, you know, reports, emails, podcasts. We're having meetings with them. Um, if there's something specific, we're picking up the phone and calling them. And of course they can call, you know, call us and then we're reviewing this. So each year we're looking at the allocation. Every five years, we're looking at their risk tolerance and we're talking to them. Are any of your goals changed? Um, have you decided if you haven't retired yet, have you decided, you know what, I'm going to retire within three years now. So, or maybe even within five years is when we like to know that because now their allocation should be a little bit different as they're closing to retire because now they may need some of that money from their investments to uh, to live on. Yeah, so, I, I, I think the biggest thing you said is that they don't need to panic, right? And I just have a huge issue with media in general, right? I mean, they're there to sell advertisement space. So they're going to say the most shocking things just to get you to watch the show. So I love the fact that they have you in your, their corner. Just tell them the truth. Tell them, Hey, this is what we do. This is why we do it. And you're good. Yes. But you, we, and again, you don't want to wait until there's a downturn, you, oh, wanna, no. <laughs> you know, educate them and talk about this mm -hmm. earlier. So, so, you know, so now a lot of clients that have been me with us for a long time, they get it. And they're like, when it's down, the only calls we're getting is, oh, are we filling the long-term reservoir now with some of the short-term and the medium-term money? Yes, 
because we're buying low. So yeah. they 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 they've gotten it because they've been through some of these cycles. Certain yeah, absolutely. when we you know newer clients, we have to do a little bit more education and and hand holding and discussions because if they see it going down, they haven't been th maybe through this downturn mm -hmm. to really to really get that. Um, but all, all in all, that, that's why you know not getting these phone calls. That's why a lot of brokers and or investment advisors who are not doing all this get these phone calls. Yeah, I, I think about I've been thinking about that a lot because I was talking to my daughter about it. The, the people that are in their mid thirties, Larry, if they started their career at twenty five ish, right? And they got into their career after college, they had ten great years, and now they're thirty five, thirty six, and all of a sudden this stuff's going on. They've never experienced it. I can absolutely see the panicking. So my question to you is your clients, a lot of them are, you know, of the older generation, they may have kids that are 30 years old. Are you hearing from them? Are you hearing from uh, the, their, either their kids or are you hearing from them that, oh yeah, Johnny and Susie, they're a little freaked out, you know, because they're, their portfolio. No, not, not as much. And we have, you know, we have two generation clients. We have actually have some three generation clients. Yeah. Um, so it's actually just the opposite. So if they're in their twenties and the thirties, now they have 30, 40 years of their socking away money in their 401k mm -hmm. plans. So they get it. So they're not really, they're, they're not the ones really, really panicking, but we still do that risk tolerance because if you do that risk tolerance and it really showing them that they're only comfortable with 10% equities, then you got to have a conversation because yeah. you can't put everything in equities if they would only be comfortable with 10%, even if they have a long-term time horizon. So you have to kind of talk to them about that and figure out what works for them. Maybe dollar cost average in over time, which is what you're doing in the 401k, but really kind of show that, show them that. But again, if you show them the history of the market, even if they may be a little bit risk adverse, now they start to feel a little bit comfortable. Oh, yeah. I understand that three out of 10 years could be down. I understand that they could be double digit, you know, percentage drops. And I see that it does recover that for every bear market, there is a bull market. So again, it's all huh. about, it's all about talking, communicating, educating. Okay. So that brought up another question for me. Do you find that after you work with a client for a few years, can you go back to their, will they, can you redo their risk tolerance? And do you see that maybe they're more willing to take a little bit more risk because now they understand the entire system that's at play with everything that you guys do. So it, it's not a scenario where you, maybe they came from an advisor that was just, here's, we're going to invest this money and you'll be fine. Now yeah, that they understand that you, your system and, and you, the way you talk and the way you educate right. them, do you right. see that but, changing? Well, yes, but you got to be careful. There's a lot of different reasons sometimes why we see it changing. So, hmm. you know, a client that might've come and experienced five up years in the market and we're redoing the risk tolerance. Now they're like, Oh, I'll take more risk because I uh, see that it goes true. up every five years. So yeah. you got to kind of understand what this, you know, what this, what the, where you are also in history time. Uh, but a lot of times what will happen is that when you're younger, you're willing to take more risk. As you get older, the risk tolerance questionnaire sometimes shows a little bit less, less mm -hmm. risk. So, so it, there's really not a pattern. Everyone's different. Um, everyone is different where they are, you know, time, you know, time wise. Um, it is interesting to see the difference of people when they're working versus when they're getting close to retiring or retiring, how mm -hmm. they may answer some of the questions differently. And that will change some of the asset allocations. Yeah. Well, I know there's a lot of listeners out there that, that probably want individualized treatment. They don't want to be herded into, you know, a cattle, whatever you call that gate. <laughs> they want to mm -hmm. talk to somebody who's going to know their situation. How do they get a hold of you so they can go through this with you? Yeah. So yeah, you go, go right on our website, hellowealthmanagement.com. And you can click on right of the link and schedule a 20 minute uh, free uh, conversation with myself. Or you can call the office at 631-248-3600. All right. Fantastic. Larry, thank you so much. This is fun today. Yeah. And I think we did okay with this, Josh. Did a good job helping with that, Eric. Thank you. Th thanks, Larry. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and our last thank you, of course, goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Life Unlimited podcast with Larry Heller. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Larry comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we'd appreciate a like and a follow there as well. We humbly ask that you share this podcast, leave a review, as this actually helps others find the show. 
Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hello Wealth Management, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day, and we'll see you next time.